Welcome to the Outdoor Gear Review. This is the very first episode of Moose and Guns. I almost hit that bird. So everyone, allow me to explain what exactly Moose and Guns is. Essentially, this is a new series where we take good old Moose, the 1986 military cut feet truck, the army truck. We take it on some back roads, we go do some driving around. I'll talk about the truck in more detail, talk about issues that I'm having with it, and so on. That's the Moose part. The Guns part is that in every single episode, I will be presenting a different firearm. We will be doing some target practicing, some shooting, having some fun. Fun is the key word. I will be going over some information about the, about the firearm that I'm going to be showing off. But it's all about getting out, doing some target practicing, having a good time. This is all about fun, information, and practice. Oh yeah. Now hopefully folks, it's not too loud inside of the truck and you guys can hear me. You know, that is one aspect to a military truck, to a Humvee, is that, gosh, they are loud. When it comes to military vehicles, they don't believe in insulation, they don't care if it's quiet or loud, there's no creature comforts at all. To me, this truck is exactly how a truck should be. It's loud, it's smelly, it's noisy, it rattles, it's a rough ride, I love it. That is Moose. Definitely Moose. Right now, I am on my way to Lone Wolf Mountain which is a little bit over 50 miles away. This will be a 100 mile trip for good old Moose here. Now, just in case you don't know, Moose has 44,562 miles on her. Not bad, considering the fact that she's over 30 years old. 6.2 liter diesel, non-turbo, naturally aspirated. Slow as hell. <laughs> Gotta do the hubs. That is the only thing that I don't like about this truck, is that the hubs have to be manually locked. playing with today. This is the Mossberg 590A1 LE Law Enforcement Edition. This has been my shotgun of choice since roughly 2012. Might have been 2013, but right around there. I've had this for a long time. It's seen thousands of rounds of action. And I can tell you folks that this is just a really nice, really good operating shotgun. It's right at 38 and a half inches long. It has the 18 and a half inch barrel, six shot capacity, five plus one. It's a very simple shotgun, but this is considered by many to be the most reliable shotgun ever made. 
And you may be wondering, why is that? Well, allow me to tell you. The Mossberg 500 and the 590 are the only two pump action shotguns to ever pass the United States military mil-spec 3443 standard. That means a lot. These guns have gone through so much testing, so many rounds without a failure. It has dual extractors, dual rails, they're pinned, not soldered in. It's a very simple, but very good, high quality shotgun. When it comes to the 500 shotgun and the 590 shotgun, the differences between the 590A1 is that the 590A1 has an aluminum trigger guard and safety. It also features a heavier barrel. Now, some people will tell you that it was the Marines who wanted the heavier barrel, but that is not the case. That's not accurate. It was actually the Navy. They wanted the barrel to be thicker, more sturdy and stout so that there wasn't any chance of the barrel being deformed when it was accidentally shut inside of heavy steel doors. So with this series here, Moose and Guns, this will be the very first weapon that we show off. Now you guys have seen this before and I actually have a video on this. This was one of the first videos that I put out for the channel. That was a long time ago. So I will include a link in the description box for that video. Go easy on me folks, that was a long time ago. I'm sure many of you will ask about the scabbard here. I cannot remember who makes this. I will flash that on the screen for you. You know, I like this thing, but I have to be honest, it's not comfortable to carry. The hardware here, it's all just steel. It's very sharp. It's excessively uncomfortable. You can slide this guard all the way up and that kind of takes care of the issue. Personally, I would recommend replacing this with something else. Other than that, it looks good. It's strong, stout. I've had this for over five years and it is Molly compatible. So let's go ahead, let's load up some rounds, let's have some fun. Speaking of which, you may be wondering, what is this all about? This is all about fun, information. We're simply discussing moose. We're discussing some guns and having a good time. <laughs> let's go for the grape soda. <laughs> Flashback. Let's go for that one again. <laughs> Just about split this one. Check that out. Let's talk about good old moose for a second. Coffee time. This is moose. Everybody's favorite moose, right? 1986 Chevrolet Cup V. I love this truck. Diesel. She's just so much fun to drive. You know, there's no luxuries at all, and that's what I like about it. I am going to list for you all the issues that I've had with this truck since I received it. And that was back in December of 2016, I believe. So when I received the truck, after a couple of days, I had one tire go flat. No big deal. Easy fix. After that, the only issues which I've had have come from leaking. I had an antifreeze leak, easy fix. I had an issue with the fuel pump leaking. Again, tightened it, no more issues. This baby does leak a little bit of oil though, just a little bit. And it does so from the transfer case. Let's see if I can't show that to you. So right there you can see it, it leaks just a little bit of oil from the transfer case. And it is literally that slow. It's like one drop per day. For a truck that's over 30 years old, that's not bad. Because with these old trucks, it's almost impossible to get them to stop leaking. They are going to leak something no matter what, all the time. I was speaking with another viewer who has an old army truck like this. And he said that he gave up on stopping that thing from leaking. It is impossible. All of the seals are just too old. All the hoses, clamps, all that stuff. Yeah. It is very, very difficult to stop the leak. Any other issues? Ah, there is one more. The truck has always started perfectly, never, never an issue. I went to Colorado, came back, went and hopped in the old truck, fired up, nothing. Will not start, glow plugs will not activate, the weight light wouldn't come on, nothing like that. I replaced fuses, didn't work. I was about to call a tow truck and have this taken into my mechanic. And I had this voice inside of my head like, Luke, you have to go out there, pop the hood, and figure this out because there's a simple reason why this isn't working. So that's exactly what I did. I came out, started working around with the truck, 
taking a look at all of the wiring and I found a wire that has a short in it. This wire connects to the glow plug controller and it tells it when to fire up those glow plugs. So I was able to kind of wiggle the wire a little bit and kind of tape it down in a certain way. Issue solved, haven't had an issue since. So <laughs> it's just one of those things with having an old truck, they are going to have issues. After all of these months, I love the truck still. She's a lot of fun to drive. She is wicked slow, that's how that goes. You should see the traffic backed up behind me sometimes. <laughs> I wish the tag did say slow on it. That would be hilarious. I don't know, maybe because the truck is so big and it's also a military color, nobody gives me any crap about it. So that's a, definitely a good thing. It definitely gets a lot of attention. There's only one of them in my town and already I've had a certain viewer spot it in action. He made sure to send me a message about it. I thought that was pretty funny. I have been thinking about replacing the tires though. Thinking about getting something that's more aggressive, more off-road ready than those tires there. What do you guys think? What tire recommendations would you all have for me? What should I go with? What's a good brand? What's a good price? Please let me know. Let's shoot that log and then shoot that watermelon. <laughs> Woo! You know where we're going. All right, one more and we will call it quits. Watermelon. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, snap. So viewers, that is the 590A1LE law enforcement. Now with the LE version, you can purchase these, but it's more common for military purposes and law enforcement. Uh, very rarely do you actually see these in civilian hands, but you can purchase them. When I purchased mine back in 2012, 2013, I paid like 450, something like that for it. I looked last night before coming out here and it's almost impossible to find this model right here. There are like new versions of this with different safeties and some sights and so on. But for me, this is exactly what a shotgun should be. You have the post, that's all you need. You don't need any crazy sight apparatus or anything like that because it's a shotgun. So this has been the very first episode of Moose and Guns and I would love to know what you all think. What should I do different? What should I do better? It's up to you. Ultimately, this is all about just having some fun. It's about doing some target practicing. It's about talking with each other, discussing good old moose, going out for a ride in her. What would you guys like to see next? Pistol or rifle? Head over to theoutdoorgearreview.com. You'll find the voting options on the right-hand side of the page. Every episode, I will present a different firearm. Hmm, lots of cool stuff coming up. Some of it somewhat unique, so stay tuned. I got a mess to clean up. I'm hot and sweaty, covered in soda. I'm sticky. It's time to get out of here. Until next time, everybody, take care. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode, for this new series. As mentioned before, this is for the average man, average woman. This is about having fun, talking. So, strength and honor, guys. See ya. <laughs>